Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Welcome as we gather to worship on this 17th Sunday after Pentecost. And it's really good to be together in one place, kind of. <laughs> but don't, do, don't get closer when I do this. So we're, it's great to worship together in person after so many videos. We gather as the Lutheran Church of the Resurrection around the gift of God's Word as Christ is present here with us. We also want to welcome Patricia, Bishop Patricia Lull, who is here to preach and help us lead us in dedicating our newly remodeled building. Uh, she was here for the groundbreaking, apparently, so it seemed right and good that she is here with us now. I also want to congratulate her on her re-election as Bishop of the St. Paul Area Synod on Friday night. So, and it was on the first ballot, so that's good. Thank you also to the many who made this day happen, our Health and Safety Committee, our audiovisual team, Gary and Sophia and Bob and uh, the others who are gonna participate in music, ushers and the odd jobbers who made the circles. A few years ago, this congregation entered into a process to lean into the future in order to find new ways to welcome and to engage the larger community. Under the theme of believe, build and become, funds were raised and construction then began. And we are here now at the end of the construction to lean into the possibilities of who this congregation will become in the future that God is bringing. On this day, we want to thank all who participated in the leadership of this project, in particular, Wayne and Stan, who have contributed countless hours of work. Stan is not here today as he and Jody are in New York celebrating the birth of their new grandchild. Please note that Wayne and Stan are still hoping to give you physically distant tours and invite you to contact them to arrange tours in the weeks ahead. Also, please note in the October newsletter that will go out this next week, there will be information about two other outdoor events that will take place in October. Two weeks from today, on October 11th, we're invited to an afternoon music event here at 3 p.m. in these similar circles, which will begin our stewardship focus for the fall at Resurrection. Mill City Caravan, also known as Sarah and Kyle and some others, right, uh, will play. And we're also going to be hoping to videotape some of you as you, as you come in and leave uh, with some questions about what are your hopes and dreams for the future that resurrection will become. They would be like 30 second answers and then we're going to string them all together in a video and it'll be part of our video process. So want to have you think about that. Um, and then the other thing is the other service will be out, that'll be outside will be a service of lament and healing on Wednesday, October 14th at 6 p.m. As the shadows of the fall increase, we will gather in prayer as we reflect on the events of the year that have affected our spirits and our hopes. The leaving of Pastor Tim, the pandemic, the killing of George Floyd and others and the toxic political climate in our nation that have impacted all of us. And so we will gather together. Now, just a note about the service itself. I would be remiss without telling you that there are places to, to, uh, that we can receive your offerings as you leave today. 
on, in, on each end, and that would be greatly appreciated, obviously. But it's also important to note that we do gather as a sign of Christ's presence in this world and in this neighborhood. We are aware that, we are aware that this is a new way for us to be Christ's body here. As yes, we do want to sing together and we want to share in the Eucharist together. However, in these days of pandemic, aware of our call to live for the sake of our neighbor, we will not sing this day even with masks on, no, we share in the beloved meal. But let us also give thanks that in this wilderness time, we can trust that Christ is present and that the songs in our hearts do rise up to heaven like incense. And so we prepare for worship. and brothers with gratitude for the building and reconstruction of the Lutheran Church of the Resurrection we are gathered to dedicate it for the worship of Almighty God and for the building up of the body of Christ from this day forward let it be a place for the gathering of the people of God a place for proclaiming the gospel through word and sacrament a place for bringing life and hope to us and to this community Amen, Amen. Let us pray. Most high God, whom the heavens cannot contain, we give you thanks for the gifts of those who have built this house of prayer to your glory. We praise you for the fellowship of those who by their use will make it holy. And we pray that all who seek you here may find you and be filled with joy and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from 1 Kings. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands to heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth beneath, keeping covenant and steadfast love for your servants who walk before you with all their heart. The covenant that you kept for your servant, my father David, as you declared to him, you promised with your mouth and have this day fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, keep for your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel, if only your children look to their way to walk before me as you have walked before me. Therefore, O God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant, my father David. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Even heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you, much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you today, that your eyes may be open night and day toward this house, the place of which you said, My name shall be there, that you may heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. Hear the plea of your servant and of your people Israel when they pray toward this place. O oh, here in heaven, your dwelling place, heed and forgive. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 For our psalm today, we'll sing, I'm going to sing Psalm 84. I'm going to ask that when I raise my hand, if you would speak, if you would speak a refrain, repeat it after me. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord. And that'll be with random ringing bells. So you just watch for my hand. Here goes. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord. One more time. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the sides of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the balsam valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will be seen in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield, bestowing grace and glory. 
No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. Peter, rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that it may, you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. The Gospel on this Sunday comes to us from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Christ. Friends, grace and peace to you in the name of the living God. Back in March, I thought we might be able to gather again for worship by Easter. And if not Easter, then surely by Pentecost. I thought we'd all stay home for a few weeks, and the day would come when we good and compliant Minnesotans could all venture forth again. I don't know about you, but back in the spring, I really did not understand what pandemic meant. 
Here we are on the very last Sunday in September, and we have gathered again in person for worship. But look around. It's worship in a brand new setting. The great outdoors, this side yard of the church, and also all of you watching online. We're seven months in, longing as the ancient psalmist longed to be home again as a congregation. My soul longs, indeed it faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living, the lively God. people of God at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection, you did not stop. You have been worshiping all of these months. You've been learning to pre-record and upload. You've been meeting a new interim pastor across a screen. Today, some of you see Pastor Eric Strand for the first time face to face. Let me step back so you can take another look. <laughs> I hope that worship online, your own devotions at home, and your prayers for one another in this strange and odd season have indeed sustained you in faith. For a living God, a lively God, has ways to meet us and come to us as pilgrims in the midst of this pandemic, just as the same God accompanied ancient travelers on their journeys to Jerusalem to their goal to the holy city. That's the background, the context for the ancient psalm that stirs us even on this dedication Sunday in the 21st century. Thomas Merton, the famous Trappist monk, knew a great deal about staying home. Because for many years he lived in a modest hermitage on the grounds of a cloistered monastery in the hills of Kentucky. In the mid-1960s, even from that very isolated outpost, Burton was very well aware of the social dynamics that were really tugging at the fabric of American life. He was also deeply curious about all the ways in which God was being regarded in other faith traditions, especially in Eastern Buddhism. In the journal he kept in those days, Merton wrote, I am aware of the need for constant self-revelation and growth to cling to the past is to lose one's continuity with the past, since this means clinging to what is no longer there. My ideas are always changing, always moving around one center, and I'm always seeing that center from somewhere else. And later Merton writes, to say that I am a child of God is to say before everything else that I grow, that I begin. The idea child of God is therefore one of living growth, becoming, possibility, risk, and joy in the negotiation of risk. In this, God is pleased that God's child grows in wisdom and grace. We may not all be familiar with Thomas Merton, 
And I'm guessing most of us are not inclined in the least to embrace the solitary life of cloistered monasticism. But we all know afresh that we're living in a time of revelatory social unrest again in this country and in this world. If we were paying attention at all, the death of George Floyd in May while in police custody right across the river in Minneapolis convinced us that we were really living in two pandemics at once. The treacherous COVID-19 pandemic and the equally deadly life-diminishing pandemic of racism and glaring racial inequities in our land. Today has been set aside for the dedication of your renovated and improved church building. I parked in the parking lot and waited by the wrong entrance for this service. And so I had a great look from the outside at what you have done. I even peeked through the windows, how grand it looks. You get a hold of Wayne and stand for one of those safe distance tours like I'm going to do before I leave today. I'm not going to do that in part because I really like brick and mortar projects. I like places with real physicality, structures that are erected in the midst of neighborhoods with traffic going by, places that are markers on a road map, destinations for all sorts of human gatherings well beyond Sunday morning worship. You all have been working on this project for a long time. You've given generously of your money. And some of you have given a great deal of time so that the idea of a more welcoming entrance and greater accessibility and improved space on the inside so that that idea could become a reality, the reality we dedicate this morning. But today is not a static moment frozen in time. This is not a step back to what was once the building of Lutheran Church of the Resurrection, only updated and improved. No, as Thomas Merton reminds us, there is no clinging to the past because that would be holding on to something that no longer exists. This is a new moment, a building made new new time of dedication in your life as a pilgrim people. And how right, how meet right and salutary it is that this dedication occurs outside the doors, outside the walls of the literal church building. Now, why do I say that on this cool September morning? I say it because one of the most profound lessons this time of pandemic has taught us is that the Church of Jesus Christ is not a building, but a people on the move. A community of faith dispersed far and wide beyond the corner of County Road D and Victoria. Friends, you are wrapping up this construction project while you have an interim pastor with you. I am so grateful that back in March, Pastor Eric Strand came to serve you and to work with you through this time of pastoral transition. You can ask him, but I will tell you that when I phoned him and talked 
to him about serving as the interim pastor at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection, I pointed out several really good reasons why I thought he was just the right leader for you. But I never once mentioned that he would not get to meet most of you face to face until more than six years later. Eric, Eric, thank you for saying yes to that call and not begrudging what neither of us could have anticipated would happen during a tan pandemic. It's so good that he's here with you. In the Synod, we often describe the pastor who will come next to you as your settled pastor. But getting ready for today, I thought that's probably not the best word to use. Settled implies that you and that new pastor have arrived when everything about church life in this century and context says that we are all on the move in motion, learning and growing and risking in the midst of a world that is going to stay churned up and in flux. And so today we're going to bless the building from outside the doors. I hope for years to come that that will remind all of you at Lutheran Church of the Resurrection that what this is is not a fortress within which you hide from the word. No, let this dedication Sunday out here on the lawn, like the very name of your congregation itself, remind you that you are a people sent out with the most outrageous, surprising good news to share. And that good news is that every one of our neighbors is also a child of God, worthy, beloved, made in the image of a living, the lively and life-giving God who has come to us in Jesus Christ, the risen one. Thanks be to God. Amen. Dear friends, let us respond to the promise of God's word by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. You may stand, but you can also remain seated. It's kind of an odd day outside. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Burr. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, throughout the globe, many assemblies are postponed by the virus. Our songs are quieted, and our leaders are searching for new ways forward. 
In the midst of these struggles, shape us as your church with humility and obedience so that your love may be at work in us. We pray for resurrection in the midst of change. Inspire and care for our call committee. We are thankful to host the bishop this day. Bless and keep her in her ministry. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of life, preserve and keep your creation. Around us in na nature is strained, polar ice is melting, excessive rains ravage the land, fires consume forests, fields and homes, and animals are deprived of habitat. Mend and redeem all the groaning places, so that all of creation confesses you as Lord. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of compassion, around us in a needy world, governments allow injustice, violence threatens stability, people experience prejudice, reforms are thwarted, workers are unemployed, medical facilities are strained, children are abused. Where sin permeates our cultures and institutions, strengthen us to give strong witness to your justice. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of justice, in our nation's courts, we see justice delayed and justice denied. Yet we thank you for the life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and for her passion for equi equality under the law. Uphold honest judges and insightful juries throughout our criminal justice system in these days. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of mercy, around us are the sick. There is starvation. The virus continues. Many persons receive no medical attention. Our neighbors and dear ones are ill. Turn us all away from our own interests toward the interests of others. Bless ministries of care in our community, especially the food shelves serving a great need. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God of hope, we are mindful of those in need for healing. Bless and keep Katie and Dee. Bring healing as well to Sonora Rosa from our sister parish, Cristo Luz del Mundo in Guatemala. We also know that nearby are needs of which we are unaware. Send your Holy Ghost angels to uphold, uphold all who face personal troubles. Lord, in your mercy. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. you can wave, you can bow, you can speak loudly and greet one another with the peace of Christ. <laughs> And now we turn to the Thanksgiving for the Word, and there is a part for you to uh, speak, and how it goes after each phrase, for your word of life, O God, and we'll ask you to say, we give, we give you thanks and praise. So, and it happens three times. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you make all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. 
So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. As we prepare for the prayer of dedication, I invite you to imagine the old space, the old entrance, some places that weren't so welcoming. Go there in your memory. And then if you've glimpsed at all what was unfolding in the construction, travel now in your mind to the new. We pray. Let us give thanks for the body of Christ, for God's house of living stones. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you transcend the boundaries of space and time, yet you are willing to make your home in human hearts. We are the temple of your presence, and this building is the house of your church. Gather us in this place to share with others the promise of baptism, to hear your word, to be nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and to praise your name with all the company of heaven. Send us from this place to be the body of Christ in the world, to proclaim your love in word and deed, to invite others into the promise of baptism, and to glorify your name in your daily living. Pour about Pour out the abundance of your blessing on us and on this place, which we dedicate to your glory and honor and to the service of all people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now upon the people of God, the living church dispersed into the world, receive this blessing. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.